Uh, Minister, could I ask you what your plans are to address the failure to fill vacant general practitioner posts in Newmarket and Ferguson, County Clare, in Milltown, in County Kerry, and McCroom in County Cork, and in many other locations around the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Harty. Um, as of the 1st of November, there are 22 vacant GMS general practitioner posts nationwide. These vacancies account for less than 1% of all GMS panels. The HSE is now actively recruiting to fill the vacancies referred to uh, in the deputy, by, by the Deputy rather, in Newmarket and Fergus and McCroom, and is considering available options with the local community in Milltown, and I believe there's ongoing active engagement in that regard. In the case of each vacancy, a locum or other appropriate arrangement has now been put in place to maintain GP services in the communities in question. The Government is aware of the workforce issues facing general practice, including the difficulties in filling certain uh, GMS vacancies. I would like to assure the Deputy that the Government is committed to the continuing development of GP capacity so that patients across the country have access to GP services, and that we have taken a number of measures to improve GP recruitment. The recent agreement on GP contractual reforms, uh, endorsed by 95 per cent of GPs who participated in a consultative IMO ballot, will see an increase in expenditure on GP services of €210 million Euro annually by 2023, uh, providing for a significant increases in capitation fees, the effective full reversal of FEMPI, plus additional supports for rural practices and, for the first time, practices in areas of urban deprivation. In addition, I am very encouraged to see that the number of medical graduates undertaking a GP training has increased from 120 in 2009 to 192 filled places in 2019, with further increases expected next year. In a recent press release, not by me, but by the Irish College of General Practitioners, it stated good news that it had received the highest ever number of applications for its 2020 GP training programme. Our job is to make sure we keep those GPs in our country and working in all parts of our community. That's why I believe the, the changes to the contract are attractive in that regard. And I am confident that these measures help make general practice more sustainable and more attractive a career option um, in, relation, uh, in relation to general practice as well. So I do know there is ongoing work in each of the three locations referenced by the Deputy. The HSE are very engaged in trying to find a, a full and sustainable solution in each of these regards, and they have provided locum cover in the interim. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister. Um, first of all, I believe that there was a lost opportunity, Minister, in relation to the deal that was brokered between you and the HSE and GPs um, earlier this year in relation to the sustain sustainability of general practice. Of course, as you've quite often said, 95% of GPs have signed up to that. Uh, and of course they would because it's returning FEMPI uh, money to them, which was taken from, from them over the years. But it hasn't addressed the issue of GP recruitment because the contract which underpins uh, GP recruitment is now out of date. It's almost uh, 1972 was, was the time this contract was introduced and it has undergone so few changes in that time. It's not fit for purpose and it doesn't recognise the changing role of general practice and the expanded role of general practice and it doesn't attract new entran entrants into jobs such as Newmarket and Fergus. Newmarket and Fergus was a, a perfectly run practice yet it couldn't attract a GP and the reason it couldn't do that is because the contractual uh, commitment that a GP has to engage in if it takes a contract is so onerous running a small business. GPs want to work. They, they are now um, inflicted with a responsibility which they don't want to take on as a result of the, the contractual arrangements that they are uh, offered. So this is the fundamental issue in relation to recruitment, um, Minister. It's the fact that we do not have an up-to-date modern contract. I want to absolutely assure the Deputy that I don't consider our engagement with GP bodies to be done. Uh, I very much consider the measures that we've taken in recent months to be measures about initial sustainability after a number of very, very difficult years uh, for GPs. They, they didn't just all sign up, they did go out and actually vote yes in a ballot that they thought this was a good deal. Um, we are providing significant more funding and not just returning what was owed to them. I mean, that's sometimes said. We're actually going well above and beyond that and providing for the first time uh, additional supports in relation to paternity leave, maternity leave, a fund for areas of urban deprivation where we sometimes have difficulty attracting GPs and increased rural uh, allowances. But I absolutely accept there's more to be done. Just very quickly on the three areas the Deputy mentions. In relation to Newmarket on Fergus and County Clare, uh, the GP post has now been re-advertised with the closing date of the 12th of December and it's planned to hold interviews for this post in the early, early in the new year. In relation to Milltown in County Kerry, 
Um, in light of the community reaction to the announcement, quite rightly, Cork Kerry Community Healthcare held a meeting with the local community and with public representatives to listen to local concerns, and they have now postponed the closure of the practice to provide time to the local community to work on possible additional measures. And finally, in relation to McCroom Gehirlock, this post is currently being advertised again, both in Ireland and internationally. A locum GP is now in place since the 16th of September and is providing services to both GMS and private patients, and all other practice staff, the nurse, the secretary, etc., remain in place, remain funded by the HSE, and a locum doctor will continue to be funded until the post is filled. Thank you, Minister. <laughs> Minister, um, I'm sure all your Fine Gael colleagues have similar stories to the ones that I have outlined in my question. Uh, this is a national issue, not just confined to the three practices that I spoke of. And when a, a list is unfilled, as these are and many others, there's a huge anxiety within the community. Um, when that GP position is, uh, is unfilled, there's a loss of community cohesion, there's an unravelling of the fabric of a rural society. There's a loss of pharmacy services. If there's a pharmacy in, in, in that town or village, it's impossible to, sus to sustain that pharmacy if there isn't a, a doctor in the village. There's no village or town in Ireland that has a pharmacy without a GP. There is a loss of support to the support services within the community. There's a loss of CIT support, a loss of public health nursing support, a loss of home health support. And um, when these lists, lists are, are left unfilled for a substantial period of time, by the time somebody is appointed, if they are appointed, very little of that list is left. So what happens to a community when they lose a GP is there is a decreased access of patients to primary care services. There is a decreased access to, to the supports that patients get within the community. Frail elderly, house calls, palliative care work is now removed from that area and transferred to the nearest town, which is not sustainable for them to deliver that service. So there is a, a lack of sustainability also, Minister, in out-of-hour services, because as GPs are lost, the out-of-hour service struggles to continue. And the result of that is there is increased attendances in A&E <coughs> because patients cannot get primary care services when a GP is not available or is not there. And once the list is gone, Minister, it's gone forever. And you talk about 22 vacancies. There must be at least 200 practices that have closed over the past 10 years that are not counted. They no longer exist. And GP Thank services you, will not return to those towns or villages. Some of the comments that the deputy has made, but, but, I, but I do need to be clear, as Minister, I've brokered an agreement with GP representative bodies that will restore every single cent um, that was removed in terms of capitation fees during recessionary years by 2023. Uh, that would provide more than that as well, is providing extra funding that GPs sought for rural areas, is providing funding for urban areas of deprivation for the first time ever, is providing paternity uh, and maternity cover. So we have responded to many, many of the issues, though we've more to do that we heard directly uh, from GPs. I've also listened to GPs about issues of eligibility, where they've said to me, will you make sure that you sequence this correctly? Make sure you invest in general practice before you swamp us in terms, of, in terms of eligibility. These are their words as opposed to mine sometimes in discourse. So I've listened to them in terms of the phasing of the introduction of free GP care for children, not going in one swoop to under 12s, but bringing it in in two-year intervals uh, as well. And we are now seeing in recent weeks more people applying to train to be a GP than ever before in the history of our state. And that news being welcomed by the College of General Practitioners. So I accept we have a lot more to do. I accept in particular parts of the country we have real, real challenges. HSE are engaging on the ground in that regard, but we now are training more GPs than ever. We need to make sure they want to be GPs and remain GPs here in Ireland. And that's why it's important that we don't just pat ourselves on the back and say we've negotiated a good deal, but we look at how we can continue to build on that relationship. Thank you, Minister. Uh, and